there, I'm Dr. Whitney Miller, Petco's Chief Veterinarian. And I'm Kylie Gar, a classroom teacher who loves to bring pets into my classroom. Today, I'll show you some amazing pets and how to take great care of them. We'll talk about how it benefits kids to form personal connections with animals. And I'll demonstrate how to draw a pet picture that shows some interesting information we learned from Dr. Whitney. Did you know that pets can help humans relax, feel happier, be creative, and even live healthier lives? That's right, kiddos. Thanks to scientific research, we know that having our pets around us makes our lives better. And our pets, like our dogs, our cats, and our other companion animals, also enjoy being around us. We call this relationship the human-animal bond. I've always loved animals since I was super little, and I knew from when I was a student that I wanted to be a veterinarian. The best part of my job as Petco's chief veterinarian is that everything I do focuses on helping pets live their happiest and healthiest life. I love helping pet families learn more about animals and how to take good care of them. For example, guinea pigs like my little friend here are very social and they enjoy interacting with people and other guinea pigs. They communicate with different sounds that mean different things. For example, when they are happy, they jump and twirl in the air and we call this popcorning. Isn't that fun? We keep guinea pigs happy by providing them with a habitat that has a lot of stuff in it. They need bedding, decor, a place to hide, high quality food, water, and a lot of Timothy hay. They love to chew it. This is a bearded dragon. They're called bearded because the skin under their chin can turn black and look like a beard. They communicate with movements like waving a leg back and forth or bobbing their head up and down. They also like to hide, bask, and climb, so their habitats should have a special reptile carpet or sand at the bottom. And make sure you have a screen at the top to keep them safe. They are from desert areas of the world, very, very dry, and their habitat should be that way as well. So you want their habitat to have a cooler side, but still at least 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and they like to have a pretty hot basking area that can be at 100 degrees or even a little hotter. They also need special light. So you want them to have a regular light and a light that emits ultraviolet light. This guy actually has a light bulb that does both out of the same bulb. And did you know that bearded dragons also eat insects in addition to their veggies? It's a nice little salad for them. This is Ethel. She's my teammate's piebald ball python. Unlike most other snakes who only have one lung, pythons actually have two, just like humans. There are 41 different species of pythons in the world, and they can all look really different. They can live long, healthy lives in their habitats. You wanna have the right bedding, some sturdy decor they can crawl under or rest on, a temperature between about 75 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, make sure you have that ultraviolet light, and keep that humidity between about 40 and 60% for them. And their diet is frozen rodents. No matter the pet type, we should always keep them up to date on their vaccinations and preventative veterinary care. To make sure everyone stays safe, we should always practice good hygiene, like regular hand washing or using hand sanitizer after interacting with your animals. I grew up with pets and know firsthand how caring for animals leaves a lasting impact on kids. I've had many different pets throughout my life. I grew up around dogs, cats, fish, frogs, and even hedgehogs. Some of my favorite memories from my childhood are stories and experiences that I had around animals. When I started teaching, I wanted my students to be able to have these experiences too. When I started researching which types of animals would make good class pets, I learned about pets in the classroom. They made it so simple and affordable to get started. My class of first graders were very involved during this process. We researched and discussed what type of animals would make good class pets and decided that an aquarium would be a good fit for our classroom. We put it to a vote and decided to go with several types of fish and some frogs. My students were so much more excited to come to school each day because they wanted to check on the pets. It was always the highlight of their week when it was their turn to feed the fish or help clean out the aquarium. They showed kindness to our class pets by bringing in decorations for our aquarium, working quietly around the fish so we didn't scare them. We had students from across our school come visit the fish tank when they needed a break. Watching the colorful fish swim around and listening to the calming sounds of the water going through the filter would help when students felt upset. 
It is fun to draw pictures of pets and creating art helps to reinforce what we learn. Dr. Whitney shared some really cool fun facts about some animals, and she talked about the types of care various pets need. I'm going to bring some of those fun facts and care tips into my artwork as I illustrate a turtle. You can use any art supplies that you have available. It doesn't have to look like mine. You could use clay. You could use markers. Or even different colors of paper. Or even just a pencil. So I started here by drawing a quick sketch of a turtle and I'm going to work on coloring it in while we talk about some fun facts about our turtle. Did you know that a turtle shell grows when the turtle grows? They can't take their shells off their bodies. Their shells grow with them. When I looked through pictures of turtles online to see how I wanted to draw mine, I saw that most of the turtles had brown shells. So right now I'm grabbing my brown crayon and I'm shading in this shell to look like the turtles I saw online. Since there are so many different types of turtles out there, I decided I wanted to try to match a sea turtle. So I looked up some information about sea turtles online and that's where I got my inspiration from. When you're deciding what pet you want to draw, you could look at pictures online, you could look at pictures in a book, or you could even think about an animal or a pet that you have seen before and try to make your picture look like them. All right, now I'm gonna switch to my green crayon as I will start working on the body of the turtle. And right here, I'm gonna get started with its head. And I'm not drawing any teeth on my turtle because turtles actually don't have teeth. They have this thing right here called a beak to grab their food. It's made out of keratin, which is the same thing your fingernails are made out of. This helps them eat food they find like seaweed. Did you know that a turtle is different than a tortoise? A tortoise spends most of its time sunbathing on land, while a turtle spends most of its time in the water. I'm going to draw my turtle in the ocean here in a minute since that's its natural habitat. You can be kind to turtles by making sure you throw away your trash rather than littering. When you litter, your trash can end up in the ocean and harm the turtles. If we help to take care of them, turtles can live long and happy lives. Some turtles can live to be 100 years old. Now I'm gonna grab my blue crayon and add some bubbles around this turtle because I know a sea turtle lives in the water, so he's probably swimming in this picture. I know from the research I did online and from my own personal experience when I've seen the ocean, it looks really blue. So since he's swimming through the water in our picture, I'm gonna go ahead and color the ocean all around him so it looks like he really is living in his habitat. Right now I'm just lightly pressing down on my crayon to make it shading instead of details. That way it's not too dark because I want it to look like real water as much as it can. Now that I've almost finished my ocean, it looks like my sea turtle is ready to swim away and maybe go catch some food or splash in the waves. All right, I think I finished my sea turtle. I can't wait to see what you guys create next. The human-animal bond is one of the most special things in the whole world, and it's our responsibility to help keep pets and all animals safe, healthy, and happy. Now you know how to take good care of pets you may have in your classroom or at home. I hope you had as much fun as I did. If you're interested in learning more about pets, visit Petco.com. And if you'd like to become a veterinarian just like me, keep up that good work at school. I'd like to share this free downloadable thinking sheet resource that extends this experience by encouraging students to remember to be kind to their pets. I love building upon this activity by having kids write and illustrate their own pet stories. Kids love sharing their original stories about the companionship pets and people provide each other, and I love the literacy and social emotional learning connections. These are some examples of pet pictures that my students drew. Look for other Art of Learning videos where you can learn more ways to use your creative superpowers. Bye, everybody. Goodbye.